like a drum Feel the fire of the sun Let our voices become one One of the most feared and dreaded disease in the world, the disease that creeps up on life when you least expect it and you have no idea how to fight it, cancer. Globally, cancer is regarded as a major killer. According to the World Health Organization, it is the second leading cause of death. As per studies, 115,000 South Africans are diagnosed with cancer each year. Cancer comes in many forms and types. This complex disease can affect any part or organ in our bodies. It breaks down the body and cripples the minds of its victims. Welcome to African Essence. I'm your host, Kiara Rampal. And I'm Ardeel Singh. ARCI Durban provides an exclusive rehab treatment for alcoholism and drug addiction. The only rehab in South Africa that offers a medical detox treatment. We offer a superior, evidence-based and medically cutting-edge approach to the treatment of addiction. If you have been frustrated by repeated failures at rehab recovery or are unaware that there are proven anti-craving medications that can significantly improve treatment outcomes, give us a confidential call to learn more about ARCA Durban's rehab program. Contact ARCA Durban on 078 24 hours or call our office number 031-261-5515 and our Johannesburg number on 0622770911. Office number Sell your old, damaged, or unwanted gold jewelry. Gold Bar, raising the bar in the gold industry. Better prices, safe, fast, and professional service. Contact us at 082-881-8654, Conubia, at goldbar.co.za. It is said that cancer affects the mind more than the body of its victims. But for Cura Governor, quitting is no answer. Cura Governor is a true epitome of a warrior in the war against cancer. At the tender age of 21, she was diagnosed with stage 2 Hodgkin's lymphoma, a grade 2 brain tumour, and as the years went on, her world turned upside down. Welcome to African Essence, Kiora. Thank you. You were diagnosed with two types of cancer. Take us through your confrontation with each. Oh, when I was first diagnosed, I didn't even, when I heard the words, you yeah, have cancer, I didn't even think anything. The only thing was that I was thinking about recovering. That was most important to me. I never even worried about anything that goes along with it. I just wanted to get better. And then um, the second time, I was much older and more experienced. So I knew what was going to happen when I started my treatment. I read your article and you said you didn't see this diagnosis as a setback. Cancer runs in your family history, your grandmother was diagnosed with the same type of cancer lymphoma and your mother was diagnosed with breast cancer. What age were you when your grandmother and mother was diagnosed? I was fairly young. When my mother was diagnosed, I was about 13 years old. And when my grandmother was diagnosed, she was. I was about... 15 years old. Mm -hmm. So you were at the age to kind of understand a little bit. Yes. So your mom and your grandmother played a, and still play an integral role in your part of journey to recovery and fighting cancer. Yes. I love with my granny at the moment and she looks after me most of the time. You were 21, you were losing your hair. Your image to the world began to change. How did this make you feel? Well, at the moment when, I, when that happened, I didn't worry because I knew that in order for me to get better, I needed to lose my hair. It was just a step to getting better. And also it was like a 
public announcement because to everyone else that I was sick by now. And in 2015, you traveled to Bangalore for the cyber knife technology, hoping, you know, you'll cut through your tumor. Yes. How long were you in India? And take us through the process and how it impacted or affected you. I was there for about three weeks and I stayed with my mother. At the, it was actually radiation and it was a more targeted form of radiation. So I was able to do the radiation probably because we don't have it in South Africa at the moment. And also my brain tumor is sitting on my brain stem. So that was also a problem because like, it will damage the nerves around. Your, your life really changed already. Um, the radiation treatment took a toll on your body and it resulted in you being in a wheelchair. Um, yet you remain positive through it all. You're like a real warrior, Kira. Thank you. Uh, you were fighting two types of cancer, underwent the treatment in India, and still graduated with your honours in BCom. How did you manage to juggle all of these things that was happening? Well, I was very grateful to be able to stand for my honours graduation. I was in a wheelchair. I was actually just came back from India, so I had my radiation and I was on the road to recovery when I graduated with honours. But I was very grateful and thankful to be like, because my mind was so in, in, in like normal. So I was able to think and study and all that for myself. And then your mom was diagnosed with breast cancer again in 2016. Take us through the time you received the news and the events that it happened simultaneously. When I received the news, it wasn't so much of shock because she knew how she thought it the first time and that she will be okay the second time. She was brave throughout the whole thing, process. And people that know her know that she's very spiritual, she's very positive, and she's, she was very, also very healthy. You were going through the utmost, your mom being diagnosed, hospitalized, you in a coma for 35 days, and your dad suddenly passing away during this time. It is heartbreaking, but also uplifting that you choose to see the positive in all the negatives. Like, you didn't get to say goodbye to your dad, if I'm not mistaken. Yet, you comfort yourself in all the good and happy memories you shared with him. When, when I did wake up from the coma, I was still in the hospital. And I didn't know, so it was only found out about three weeks later, when I went home and uh, I got a phone call. And I was surprised because someone called and said they sorry about my father and I didn't know what they were talking about. But um, in a sense, I'm also happy that he's not suffering or anything. And your mother's roles changed. She was your mother, your companion, caregiver, and her nearest role was your interpreter at that time. Um, to you, she was your rock. Take us, tell, tell me more about your mom and the relationship you shared. She was exactly very close to my mother. She um, did everything for me at the moment, at that time. And um, when I couldn't speak for a while, because I had a, a tracheotomy, so I couldn't speak. So she became my interpreter. I, she used to tell me like letters, and they used to nod and then to write it down. And then like that's how we communicated. So it was very important that we had that bond and that connection. And two years after your father's passing, your mom passed away. Yeah. Um, your pillow of strength had fallen. How did you cope and stay strong? Well, uh, for the same reason as when my father passed. I was just happy also that she was no longer suffering because I know cancer and how it is. It will take a toll on a person. It will like damage your cells and all that. But I knew she was a bit so tighter. So I knew right till the end she always was fighting. 
despite all your trials and tribulations, you continue to stay strong and continue fighting. Last year, you were diagnosed with your third type of cancer, thyroid cancer, if I'm mistaken. Um, what went through your mind when you received this news? Well, I wasn't too surprised because I knew how to handle it now. I was more well uh, burst with cancer. I mean, I was shocked and sad and angry because I was thinking, why all, like, all over again, I just healed from one thing. Why again? But I also, at the same time, I knew like what was going to happen and I'll be okay. I'll be able to handle it and fight. And Kira, how old are you now? Now I'm 31. 31 years old and fighting three types of cancer in a positive spirit. Your strength and resilience is inspirational. Thank you. We're currently in a global pandemic. You fall under the vulnerable category. How did you manage during the early stages of lockdown? In the beginning of lockdown, I knew like for my own safety, I had to stay at home. Mm -hmm. I had to be in the house and just retreat there. I had to be close to my dog mm -hmm. and my granny and my brother. They all helped me through because I didn't want to get infected. So I needed to be careful. And at what stage did you decide, you know, we've gone down three, four, five, what stage did you come out of the house? And um, I never, I'm still in lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I only go, the only time I leave my house is to go to the doctors. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I'm inside all the time. Yeah. I love that you choose to see the happy in, in all, in life, no matter what. And, you know, I think everyone needs to adopt this attitude. Kira, you have been through so much, yet you're so determined to conquer and beat cancer with everything you have. Lastly, what is your message to other cancer patient victims and all our viewers out there? Um, my message is to always keep fighting. Don't ever give up hope. And remember, you are never alone. There's someone always there to listen. And you must remember that they can always don't wait for the storm to pass. It's about learning to dance in the rain. Kira, you're such an inspiration to not only cancer patients, but to the world at large. Um, thank you so much for joining us today, and we stand strong and support you in your fight against cancer. Thank you. Thank you very much. Cancer awareness is spread over every month. Every October, you're likely to see pink ribbons and a wealth of information about breast cancer due to the month of October being marked as Breast Cancer Awareness Month. The aim of this month is to create awareness for early detection and treatment of breast cancer. Although breast cancer is the most commonly diagnosed cancer among women globally, men can also develop breast cancer. Breast cancer is one of the most common cancers. Among South African women, one in every 25 women are likely to be diagnosed. Doctors are encouraging women to go for regular screenings because early detection helps with treatment. After the break, I'd all chat to 35-year-old breast cancer survivor and thriver, Kim Gillett. Sell your old, damaged, or unwanted gold jewelry. Gold Bar, raising the bar in the gold industry. Better prices, safe, fast, and professional service. Contact us at 082-881-8654, Conubia, at goldbar.co.za. Midlands Laser Clinic, in Durban and Peter Maritzburg, offers revolutionary laser therapy for liposuction, facial rejuvenation, hair removal and snoring. We also offer general dermatology, Botox fillers, and therapy for skin cancer, eczema, psoriasis, and vitiligo. Midlands Laser Clinics use state-of-the-art equipment and technology. We are also the official stockists of the RS Skin Care range scientifically formulated for international skin types. Call us today for a free no-obligation facial scan worth 300 Rand, including free consultation with one of our skin therapists. 
Kim Gillett was diagnosed at the age of 32. She's been living with breast cancer ever since. She's facing the disease every day, but made the choice to not only survive, but to thrive. Kim, welcome to African Essence. Thank you for your time today. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. When were you diagnosed with breast cancer? So I was diagnosed in February of 2017 after finding a lump um, in my breast by accident. I wasn't a person who ever did a breast exam and went to a doctor for a non-related uh, issue, did some blood tests and my blood test showed cancer markers were slightly elevated. Um, that rang a few bells for me because I had a lump and only I was feeling it, my doctor couldn't feel it as well. So from there I insisted on a mammogram, went and had the mammogram, a lump was found and a biopsy was needed. Did the biopsy on the 24th of, of February, 23rd of February I did the biopsy, 24th I was diagnosed with breast cancer. Um, and then from there I started my treatment almost immediately. I had to go in to have a surgery which is a lumpectomy followed by chemotherapy, radiation therapy, and now I'm on 10 years of hormone therapy. I can't imagine what went through your mind when you were diagnosed and the fact that it's not in your family history. How was the support structure you received from your friends and family? Usually it's the ones closest to us who takes us through these hard times. So my family and friends were extremely supportive. They were there through, through it all. I think if my brother could have jumped in and taken my chemo for me, he would have. I have three older brothers. I'm the only girl and the youngest, so they're very protective. Um, my parents as well, very supportive. Friends and cousins all rallied around me, but because of treatment, I had to be isolated from everybody. Um, something that did occur though during treatment, and I, I don't ever hide it, as, and it's because it's part of my journey, is that my boyfriend at the time actually cheated on me during treatment. And that had adverse effects on, on my mental health because along with cancer comes depression and anxiety. And now to have someone so close to me betray me in that way, it was, it was really difficult to go through. And I know a lot of women going through treatment and men face this as well. So I, I choose to, to talk about it openly and not hide it anymore. Tell me a little bit more about your relationship with your boyfriend. Did you guys date for a long time? Did you share a home? We shared a home. We were together four years at the time. So I'm, I'm strong in my faith and I believe in forgiveness. So um, I did forgive him thereafter, but um, we did try for a few more years and it, it didn't really work out. So I'm now on my own, which is awesome. Um, I'm finding my new self, my new norm, living my purpose, doing, speaking openly and honestly about my cancer journey um, and not having to feel like I shouldn't tell the authentic story anymore. Kim, just to go back to the cancer treatment, can you take me through your treatment process from being diagnosed right up to the point you're at now? So I started with a lumpectomy about 10 days after I had, was diagnosed. Um, and I, it was found that I had a high grade stage two tumor, um, which would grow fast and my doctor then decided because of the chemotherapy I would be going on, I could be at risk of falling pregnant during treatment. So she suggested having tumor ligation, which means I was not gonna be able to have children. It is a reversible procedure, given that I was young, um, but it was a precautionary um, measure to take. And then I started chemotherapy. I did three rounds of the dreaded red devil. Lost my hair, went through all the nausea, the fatigue, the insomnia, all of it. Um, and then did 36 cycles of radiation therapy, um, had a few infections along the way, so hospitalizations here and there, and thereafter I started hormone therapy, which is not what people normally think it is, where you are replacing hormones. This is actually stripping my body of hormones, essentially putting me in menopause and making me 30 years older than I actually am. And the hope of that is to prevent my body or the active cancer cells still in my body from continuing to grow. The choice to go under the tubal ligation procedure, was that a tough decision to make? Given my religious views, it was difficult. Um, and also I wasn't married, so my parents having to tell them that that was the decision that I was taking. Um, but what I have done since then is made it even more permanent because of the hormone therapy being so difficult to go through. 
it was stripping my body and my bones were my li would literally weaken and I would cramp up quite often. Last November, I made the decision to actually have a hysterectomy. Um, that would reduce my risk of cancer because it's hormone positive, so a further cancer diagnosis, but also it would change my treatment plan for the next seven years. The effects, physical effects on my body would be a little less damaging or less aggressive than having the hormone implants. However, that takes away the choice of ever having children of my own. Well, we're currently in the COVID-19 pandemic. You fall under the vulnerable category. What was life like for you during the early stages of lockdown? Did you worry how you would get necessities or were you worried about getting health care during this time? Most definitely. Um, COVID, I was in hospital when COVID actually started, so I had to be discharged from hospital and go back into my home and isolate there. Um, I did go out only for essentials in the beginning, um, but being on my own in my home, I eventually decided it would be better for me to actually move to move in with my family. So I moved in with my brother and his wife and their kids, just so that I could have company as well and they would be able to go out as opposed to me. So your family were very supportive of you? Very much so, yes. You are a strong advocate for breast cancer awareness. In closing of the month of breast cancer awareness, what is your message to the public about breast cancer? I feel that knowing the disease exists is just not enough. There is a lot more education that needs to be had and, and shared with the world regarding how the process actually works and what you go through when you are going through breast cancer. And that is why I choose to share my story so authentically. Um, I choose to work with well volunteer with Cancer Association and Look Good Feel Better and now Durban Youth Council. I'm trying to mentor and coach young adults to be better advocates for cancer and to help and support better because support is so needed during this disease. It can be a very lonely place even if you have people around you because only you can go through the treatments and you go through so much grief when you are undergoing surgeries and making decisions like having hysterectomies or tubal ligation or having mastectomies or lumpectomies. You are physically losing parts of your femininity as a woman. And these are very, very difficult things to, to deal with and process. So I, I, when somebody is just diagnosed and I do talk to them, I always say, take time to think about the treatments you're going to go through, the side effects you're going to go through, and be kind to yourself because you need to be kind to yourself. What you're going through is a real thing and it, it's going to take a lot out of you. It's a cancer is a mental game. You've got to fight it in your mind first with a positive um, attitude. Be kind, I love it. Kim, just to take you back, from being diagnosed with cancer to your boyfriend of seven years cheating on you, I find that it's often the case when women are most vulnerable and need that support, they get let down by those closest to them. Can you take me through your mental health journey? So I'm resilient by nature. So when I was diagnosed, I was just gonna do my treatment, whatever it was gonna be. A side effect of chemotherapy is depression and anxiety. Um, it's chemo brain, which is like a key, like a, a fog where you can't remember things. You can put your cell phone in the fridge, which I still do till today. <laughs> it's cognitive impairments that just happens. Um, I, I took the time to reflect on what I was going through, accept my disease first and foremost, because it's, I'm going to be living under a cancer cloud for quite a long time for the type of cancer I have. So, and remember there's multiple types of breast cancer as well, it's not just one kind. So as I needed assistance, I spoke to my oncologist and she referred me to a psychologist. And I know there's stigmas around mental health, seeing a psychiatrist, seeing a psychologist, speaking to a social worker. But it's so important, even though you have your family around you, coming from a family with no history, there was no education in my family to help me with, with the disease or help me understand it or to help them understand it. So I had to seek professional help. What I also did was after my treatment, I did go back to work for a few months and I thought I was going to be the same person, but I actually wasn't. Side effects of hormone therapy and uh, chemotherapy is cognitive impairment. So you are physically slowed down uh, uh, with the medication, but you mentally slow down as well. And having insomnia, you don't sleep, that also adds to depression and anxiety. 
and I literally had a breakdown at my desk and I decided to go on what I call a medication vacation. Um, I, my psychiatrist suggested that I go into an institute and go into a mental clinic and just start my process with antidepressants, get on a proper regime of, of antidepressants and anti-anxiety medication and go to psychiatry and psychology every day, talk about my emotions, work through the program, make myself stronger, uh, get the tools that I need to get through it. And I've done that and it made me stronger, it got me through a lot. And then this year I lost a best friend and an uncle to cancer and I, it, that knocked me as well. And dealing with the aspect of being cheated on as well, that came to the forefront again because again I wasn't getting the support that I needed. So I took another medication vacation and worked on myself. There is no stigma to mental health. Your mental health is so important. With COVID being what it is, mental health I think is taking a big toll on people because lockdown is so difficult to be in. Not being able to work as many hours as you are required, it affects your finances, that's stressful. And stress feeds cancer as well. So I'm mental health is, is a big thing for me. I, I put my mental wellness ahead of everything. I think I actually put it ahead of my cancer treatment because if I'm not in the right headspace, I can't treat my cancer properly. So again, it goes back to being kind to yourself, listening to yourself. If you're having a bad day and you don't want to jump out of bed, I tell friends who are going through it, at least jump out of the bed and make it up and then jump back on top of it because you would have accomplished one thing for the day and that's better than just staying in under the covers and feeling sorry for yourself. There's nothing wrong with feeling sorry for yourself, but it becomes a problem when you continuously feel sorry for yourself. A real thriver. Thank you, Kim, for joining us on African Essence and sharing your story. All the best in the future. Thank you for having me. The guests we've had today are real warriors. The underlying message being to never give up. ARCA Durban provides an exclusive rehab treatment for alcoholism and drug addiction. The only rehab in South Africa that offers a medical detox treatment. We offer a superior evidence-based and medically cutting-edge approach to the treatment of addiction. If you have been frustrated by repeated failures at rehab recovery or are unaware that there are proven anti-craving medications that can significantly improve treatment outcomes, give us a confidential call to learn more about ARCA Durban's rehab program. Contact ARCA Durban on 078 24 hours or call our office number 031-261-5515 and our Johannesburg number on 0622770911. Office number 011656-0705. Midlands Laser Clinic in Durban and Peter Maritzburg offers revolutionary laser therapy for liposuction, facial rejuvenation, hair removal and snoring. We also offer general dermatology, Botox fillers and therapy for skin cancer, eczema, psoriasis and vitiligo. Midlands Laser Clinics use state-of-the-art equipment and technology. We are also the official stockists of the RS Skin Care range scientifically formulated for international skin types. Call us today for a free no-obligation facial scan worth 300 Rand, including free consultation with one of our skin therapists. Our next guest is no stranger to our show. I think we can call him Doctor of African Essence. Well-known medical officer, Dr. Anbin Naidu. With a huge portfolio as training officer as well, Dr. Naidu has an extensive practical knowledge, communicable disease and non-communicable diseases. Welcome to African Essence, Doctor. Thank you for having me again. Doctor, what is cancer? So, um, Kiara, um, our body is made of, like, of different types of cells that are like building blocks, of, you know, and uh, each cell has its own specific purpose and together these cells form organs. Uh, for example, our red blood cells form part you know, of our blood and many skin cells together form our skin. So simply stated, cancer is a group of diseases that involve abnormal growth of cells in our bodies. Um, they can often be malignant tumors uh, and this, this means that they grow and they spread rapidly. Uh, those are the worst kinds. Um, and certain cancers can often have the ability to invade and spread, you know, from one organ to another, and those can be called metastatic cancers. Some of you may have heard of benign tumors, and this is a kind of growth that is not exactly cancerous. Uh, it doesn't grow as fast, and it usually has a better outlook, and importantly, benign tumors usually don't spread. 
Um, also as a matter of interest um, to some, scientists have noticed that certain mammals with long lifespans somehow don't get cancer that often. And you know, these examples are like elephants and cows and they're investigating these animals for even potential treatments for cancer. Why do chemotherapy treatments cause side effects? One of the common side effects is losing hair. Why does chemos cause that? Um, chemotherapy is, is basically the use of medications to treat cancer. We can, they can be taken by mouth, they can be taken in a drip form, and basically it, it works against any cells that grow fast, whether these cells are cancerous or not. They, it's, it's not very specific, unfortunately. So when it works against cancerous cells, well, that's what the effect we want. Uh, and when they work against normal cells, well, that's what we call side effects. Unfortunately, hair cells grow quite fast. So they are common uh, in terms of side effect, uh, and, and thus patients with chemo do lose their hair. But fortunately, it does grow back once the chemotherapy course is over. Uh, other rapidly growing cells are in our gut, so they found there. And when those cells are damaged during chemo, the patient can experience nausea, vomiting, even constipation. In the last days of Breast Cancer Awareness Month, could you share how one should do self-examination for breast cancer? There are quite a few ways to do it, but I think the important thing is to do it often. Um, generally, we suggest using the, the middle finger since the others may not give you the right response and you, you may be able to feel it better with, with the middle finger. Um, so with your right hand, you would use your middle finger of your right hand to examine the left breast and vice versa. Um, you would use small actions um, and you'd press down using small actions to examine the entire breast on one side and then the other. Um, you could sit up and do this or you could sit down. Um, and the other important bit is to feel the armpit because the breast tissue does extend into that area. And uh, uh, well, generally this would be done in a shower, for example. So th the patient, the person in question could next sit or stand and do the examination. So that could offer, you know, a, a better examination. And lastly, the patient needs to feel both armpits on both sides because the breast tissue does extend into that area from where we would expect the breast to start. Um, and lastly, it would be ideal to gently squeeze a nipple to notice if there's any discharge coming out. And how important is early detection and how can we emphasize it more? So if breast cancer is detected early, there are more treatment options and there's even a better chance of survival, somewhere in the region of like 93% in the first five years. Um, I think the best way to think about it is to, is to maybe have a shift and for patients to be more proactive uh, about self-examination. Um, re the responsibility and awareness needs to move over from your doctors and your nurses over to the patient. I think that um, every teen girl and adult woman should examine themselves on a regular basis, kind of like a habit, you know, like clockwork. Um, for example, when they shower, they can determine whichever time that they have available in their day, but as a routine, examine themselves and kind of get an idea of what normal is, because then they will end up being the best judge to determine what is not normal when they do find a new lump or some new pain that they can't explain. And then that's the reason for them to take it forward to the healthcare practi practitioner for further help. What do you think is the reason behind young girls getting breast cancer? So we're not quite sure, scientifically speaking, what the cause of breast cancer is in teen girls specifically. In general, we think it's due to cells and, and the DNA in them. Um, and there's no real strong association with breast cancer and environmental and lifestyle factors like drinking alcohol, smoking, pollution, etc. But if you introduce unhealthy behaviors early in life, they can certainly raise the risk of breast cancer when you're older. So if you're a teen girl or an adult woman, you should be suspicious if during self-examination of your breast, you come across any lump that feels hard, seems fixed to the chest and isn't easy to move around, or you feel a mass or a lump that is a larger, it's larger than a pea size, um, or if, even if you feel a, a, a painful lump, 
If there's a nipple discharge or you notice that the nipple shape is changing or inverting, um, then you know, that's also a reason for you to be concerned, although those nipple changes are more common in older women. And lastly, what is your message to our viewers? In times like these, we can, it's very easy to lose hope. Um, it's very easy for patients to give in to the negative thoughts. And I would suggest that they cling on to the good things, um, use a diagnosis like this to refocus themselves and find a way to live their best life. Uh, I've had a patient who came in a few, some time ago, and it was a hard talk to give her the diagnosis that she's got cancer. And she was overwhelmed, obviously, at the time, really sad, upset about the way she'd lived her life. At, at some point, she came back to me a few months later, and she was almost a different person. She smiled. She turned her life around, lived her life with better focus, and was indeed, instead of focusing on dying, was focusing more on living her life. And I think we shouldn't give up hope. And I think that's one of the, the most important things to cling to. Um, there's always new treatments. There's always, um, you know, new scientific advances. But I think the first milestone or the first thing to defeat um, is, is your own negativity. And I think then you're in the right space. Thank you, Dr. Naidu. Always a pleasure having you on our show. Good day and welcome to African Essence. I am Leanne Jacobs and today we're going to be talking about one of the most serious illnesses that we have in South Africa, cancer. In South Africa, one in every four people are diagnosed with some sort of cancer. Family members and friends are impacted by this disease emotionally, psychologically and even financially. In society today, it is almost certain that we would eventually come across someone that has suffered or even survived this disease. Cancer can be detrimental. However, if detected early, it can be treated and survived. Stats show in South Africa that 6 out of 10 have survived cancer. South African associations like Cancer, the Chalk Foundation, and the Prostate Cancer Foundation, they have dedicated their services to creating awareness and research concerning cancer. For many who are fighting the battle of cancer and some that have survived, we want to assure you that you are not alone and there is always hope. Thank you for joining us. A cancer diagnosis is one of the most lethal silent viruses known to man. A virus that has consumed our loved ones and left us with emotional scars that we can hope only time will heal. There is no definite cure for cancer in this moment of time. However, we can strive to conquer the silent demon. Every person has cancer cells dormant in their bodies. Various reasons such as genetics, health factors, the environment and so forth can result in the activation of cancer cells in the body. However, if we keep our immunity up and boosted, there is a great chance of destroying the cancer cells without it ever being activated. So please let us always be conscious and remember that health is the greatest wealth. Drink lots of water, eat better, eat your veggies and your fruits, meditate, exercise, do yoga, and most importantly, pray. Prayer is the best medicine for the mind, body, and soul. Cancer is defined as a disease caused by an uncontrolled division of abnormal cells in a part of the body. Cancer may seem like a deadly disease, however, it is treatable and beatable. There is always hope. When a doctor tells you that there is nothing that can be done, he is merely saying that he's exhausted his expertise. Cancer is a disease that weakens the mind and it may affect the patient as well as loved ones. 
However, it is always good to keep a positive mindset and always keep your mind occupied by doing various activities. As an idle mind is a very dangerous thing. I have personally experienced loved ones who have gone through this dreaded disease. While some I have lost, however, in the same breath, some have persevered and survived. Hope is a reconnecting bridge between cancer and recovery. So never lose hope. You are a warrior, so shine your way. Cancer is one of the leading incurable diseases known to humanity. And unfortunately, it is the reason why many, many individuals lose their lives to this disease. Unfortunately, it not only affects those infected, but it also affects dear loved ones of those individuals. And I personally have known and have been in contact with relatives and family members, also dear loved ones who have had cancer. In either case, some have been lost by the hands of cancer and others have overcome and are now stronger and more resilient than ever. But in either situation, what is important is to remain hopeful and to maintain a sense of hope throughout that experience, either as an individual infected or as a relative or a loved one of someone you know that has or have had cancer, it is so important to speak hope and life into those who have been infected by this incurable disease and to remain full of life, to speak life into those you know and to remain hopeful throughout. It is so critical that even through an incurable disease that one remains hopeful in their mind that they think hopeful thoughts and maintain a hopeful mindset. It is the mentality after all of having hope that one will overcome and get through what is a disheartening and altogether saddening experience. Cancer can be coped with, it can be dealt with and one can come out victorious through a mentality and a mindset of hope. Hi, my name is Sudesh Shorjom and uh, my views on cancer is that it's engulfing human society slowly but surely. It's a dreadful disease that uh, we need to actually work together to actually combat. Now, sadly, in 2018, I lost my mother's sister to cancer after a one-year battle. And it's a traumatic experience on the family and it, it's really deadly, especially what it does to your family during that time and what it does to your body as well. It's like you totally, you look like a totally different person eventually. Even my mom, she was hardly ever at home because she had to, to attend to her sister. Well, to all cancer patients out there, I'd like to say I wish you a speedy recovery and I hope you beat this dreadful disease. Hi, I'm Racine and I'd like to share a few thoughts with you on cancer. When I was three years old, I lost my grandfather to lung cancer. A few years ago, I had lost one of my very close school friends to leukemia. And if anything, these experiences have taught me that cancer doesn't just affect the person suffering from it, but it also affects the lives of the people around them. The amount of trauma and the emotional scars that a person bears from having cancer or having a loved one go through cancer is just sometimes too much for our understanding. But we can always try to understand them, understand their pain, understand what they're going through and offer our help to them as much as we can. And especially for the people that are suffering with cancer, we need to make them feel as loved as we can. We need to be supportive and we need to show them that they are still them and that this is just a disease and that's how it should be treated.